topic of this hearing is the protecting the reliability of U.S. medical supply chains. And I'd like to focus on that issue. And it seems to me that the most important thing we can do to improve the reliability of our supply and deal with the fraud and counterfeit we talked about earlier today is to reshore it, to have it here in America. And I think we've kind of missed that, that point so far in the discussion. And I, I think, you know, that is our, our, should be our goal as Republicans and Democrats to figure out how do we have a truly reliable source going forward. Uh, I think secondarily, we ought to try to bring it at least to this hemisphere, because I know for some of the PPE, including gowns and masks and gloves, uh, there is a concern about having adequate U.S. supply over the short term. But in conjunction with uh, Mexico in particular and others uh, in this hemisphere, we have the ability to do that. So my hope is that you know, applying the Berry Amendment, which I think all of us have, have voted on one way or the other, but it's law of the land to say we use domestic supplies, and then when we cannot, to use our uh, hemispheric partners as well, ought to be our focus. Since the start of the pandemic, I've been working with uh, domestic industry in Ohio and actually around the country to figure out how do you reshore this stuff? You know, how are we going to get the PPE back here to this country, some of which, uh, frankly, was never made uh, in large of volumes here in this country, and so we need to work particularly hard. What the industry experts tell me every time is the best way to accomplish that goal is to provide some certainty, provide some market uh, signals, as they say. So they know if they make a big investment, and, and many of these conversions of these factories and new factories is going to require a big investment, that they'll have a market. And of course, the federal government is the buyer here. And so I have been frustrated because we have not been able to get uh, our own government, the Joint Acquisition Task Force, uh, as well as now the DLA, Defense Logistics Agency, to send those signals because they are not using long-term contracts uh, for PPE. Instead, they are insisting on shorter-term contracts. Right now, as an example for the PPE that we're talking about, typically it's a 90-day contract. So I, I guess, um, you know, my frustration is if we really want to bring it back, there's a pretty simple way to do it, which is to say, look, here's a long-term contract, gives you enough certainty to be able to make the investment, and we can get moving on this. Again, this should not be a partisan issue. Uh, Ms. Correa, you are an expert on procurement, and, uh, and I appreciate that, and I know that that is your role. Uh, can you help us understand why it's important for the government to send that strong demand signal to industry and how long-term contracts that send that demand signal and provide certainty uh, for those seeking to invest in U.S. production will work to bring this production back to our shores. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Senator, for the question. Um, yes, the more information that we can give industry up front and the better projections that we can give them of what we think we may need and when we think we may need it and how much we're going to be willing to invest in that, the better that they are equipped to respond to that. Industries will turn, companies will form, uh, large companies will partner with smaller companies, and there are men or protege programs in many aspects that enable companies to get into the business. But we have to do that with some level of certainty, and that means that we have to know what we need, <clears throat> when we think we're gonna need it, and we're also gonna have to know if we're gonna have funding for that. So that's extremely important. That's what industry wants to know and understand. I engage with industry quite a bit to find out what their needs are, what kind of information they're looking for, and that's the kind of information that they seek. And they're gonna be willing to invest as long as they know that there is a long-term need. Well, thank you for that answer. And I think you're absolutely right. And, and part of it is back on us because you're saying that not only do we need to have a requirement that be long-term contracts, and by the way, we have legislation we're about to introduce that would require the Joint Acquisition Task Force, DLA, and others to use these longer-term contracts. But second, you need to know there's going to be a certainty of funding um, so that the industries can make these substantial investments. And um, I, I look forward to working with you and others on this. Again, we hope to introduce this legislation shortly. Um, let me talk about something else, which is the hospitals in Ohio, and I know around the country who back in March and April were just desperate to find PPE and frankly uh, made a lot of contracts with companies, uh, some of which were not traditional but unconventional distributors that didn't pan out. Sometimes what would happen, I'm told by Ohio hospitals, is one distributor would take orders from many hospitals and then 
once the material was on its way over here, they'd start the bidding process. And basically they would sell it to the highest bidder. Uh, that wasn't the idea. Uh, others, as you know, had problems with regard to counterfeit and, and, and outright fraud in the sense that they weren't delivering what they said they would. Mr. Francis, uh, these bad actors in our supply chain are now at the center of this uh, investigation you talked about. You said you had, in your testimony, I heard you had seized 900 shipments or more uh, Operation Stolen Promise, and I'm glad you're doing that. I think it's important we investigate these and we need to be identifying um, you know, these uh, bad actors right away. But we also need to figure out how to prevent these types of situations from happening in the future, because sadly, we're not out of the woods yet in terms of the coronavirus pandemic. And of course, we want to be prepared for the next possible pandemic. So can you help us on this? Again, obviously, the best thing to do is to have a domestic supply right here to avoid these kind of bad actors. Uh, but you know, apart from that, what can we do to assume, to assure this doesn't happen into the future? I hope you can give a short answer. Sir, one of the important pillars uh, within uh, Operation Stolen Promise is education. So we have a very robust private public sector partnership educating uh, the consumers, educating businesses. We're working closely. We've done several um, public announcements, uh, including the entire supply chain with uh, Pfizer, Merck, 3M, Alibaba, Amazon, and Citibank, and educating uh, the American consumers uh, from these fraudulent activities.